Okay. This one I'm going a little bit faster over because once I did the sphere, I'm just transferring over the same steps to the cylinder. Okay. So uh, again, I'm going to have EA is equal to Q enclosed over E0. The difference is going to be to find Q enclosed, we can't do the ratio of the volumes again, so we do an integral. Okay. Integral of rho dv. Okay. And uh, rho is again kappa r. This time, what's the dv? You can't use the same dv as the spherical shell, 4 pi r squared dr. You can't use that. So what's our dv? It's the volume, it's the little volume of a cylindrical shell. So there's a lot of calculus coming in here. Volume of a cylindrical shell, 2 pi r, D, 2 pi r l dr, right? It's kind of like how you, uh, in calculus, they show you how to take the volume of an area. It's being uh, sp spun around the y-axis, right? You use the volume of a spherical shell, of a cylindrical shell. So dv is uh, 2 pi r dr times l from 0 to r. And you get here 2 pi kappa l times integral r squared dr, which is 2 pi kappa l r cubed over 3. Let's see, did I do that right? 2 pi kappa comes out, l comes out, integral of r squared, which is r cubed over 3. And now I do another integral for the big Q, but this time I don't have to redo it. It's just going to be the same thing with the big R. Okay. So you're getting the idea now. So you do an integral for the rho, then you do you argue that the big Q is the big rho, uh, the big R, uh, and then you now get rid of two pi kappa L over R cubed uh, over R three. You could say two pi kappa L over three is Q over R cubed. You see. So now I have Q enclosed. This whole thing is going to disappear. Two pi kappa L over three is going to equal q over r cubed times a little r cubed. So is that the same as the sphere when the sphere's density increased as uh, kappa r? Was the, uh, was the q enclosed r cubed over r to the uh, big r cubed, or was it what? Or was r to the fourth? So somehow the sphere if the density increases linearly, that means the charge enclosed in half the is only 1 16th. For a cylinder, since its symmetry is a little different, if the density increases linearly, the charge enclosed in half the cylinder is 1 8th, right? One, 1 over 2. But because a cylinder is a little bit more uh, wider spread, right? It's more wider spread this way. And uh, the, surface, uh, yeah, the surface is only it's, it's, uh, like a circle. The sphere is like this. All right, so, I, so the symmetries are way different. OK? So once you get that, then you put it over here. And we're going to have uh, E0 here. And again, this is going to be 2k uh, lambda over uh, one of the r's is going to cancel this. So it's going to be r squared over uh, big R uh, cubed. The interesting thing is the electric field 
is the same behavior for the cylinder as for the uh, sphere. Isn't that weird? When you're inside. Have you noticed that? So if you graphed cylinder where rho sub r is kappa r, the electric field is looking like this. Where you get the, the, the highest you get is 2k lambda over r. And then after that, it drops as a 1 over r. And then over here is r squared. So if I did the graph of the cylinder, for a cylinder whose density is, uh, is increasing linearly, it's going, the electric field is going as r squared. So inside of the cylinder, isn't this weird? Inside of the cylinder, the electric field behaves the same as the inside of the sphere. Okay? Explain that. But right outside of the cylinder, the cylinder now behaves different. It drops as 1 over r, whereas the sphere drops as 1 over r squared. Now, what if I keep going farther, 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 farther out? What should the behavior as I go farther out? It should be proportional to what? Well, I can no longer apply Gauss's law then. If I go way out, then I apply the, uh, the other equation from chapter 23. And how does the rod behave as I go out to infinity? 1 over r squared, right? So the cylinder should behave as 1 over r squared. So the cylinder has kind of like a multiple face. Inside, it behaves like the sphere. Right outside, it behaves different than a sphere. And then in the middle, it's some combination. And then way out at infinity, it behaves like the sphere. So here, it behaves like sphere. Behaves like sphere. And over here, behaves the cylinder will behave like a line, like a line or rod. And then in the middle is uh, some just, diff uh, you have to use the general equation. So there's no particular behavior. OK. Cool. So now uh, you know how Gauss's law is used to find uh, the electric field of uh, either a sphere or cylinder.